Hi there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. But if you have watched my videos before, you probably know this already and you are so over this intro, please forgive me because for those of you who haven't been here before, I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. So. In this video, I am going to look at time, and this was a request video. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at conversions, and I'm looking at everything that has to do with time, and I'm also going to teach you, teach you a cool trick on how you can use your calculator for time calculations. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> So this is our lesson on time and I'm super excited to get going with this because I definitely think that this is really going to help you guys. Um, okay, so let's start at the very, 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 very beginning. Okay, so firstly, understanding that you need to know that there are two ways of expressing time. Analog, which is the clock you're seeing um, in this, on the slide. And then also uh, you have a digital time. So on this clock, the time is 9 minutes past 10, and that's how you would pronounce it, or that's how you would write it. And then if you wrote it in digital format, that's how you would write it, 10.09. This shouldn't be an issue. I think this is fine. All right. Then, um, you know, if this was uh, 9 minutes past 10 in the morning, then you would leave it as 10.09, or you could write um, AM next to it. Okay, if this was um, in the evening, however, then you would write it as 10.09 p.m. or in 24-hour format, which is 22.09. Okay, so these formats are important for you to understand because if you don't understand this, <laughs> you're not going to understand anything else that we have going in this um, lesson. Okay, so once we sort of understand that and you understand the times and different times, which I definitely doubt you guys have an issue with. Let's move to time conversions. So time conversions is a couple of questions that you must be able to answer and, and know how to do. And I've given an example on each of them so that you can understand how to go about doing the calculations. And so that covers sort of all of the sort of nitty gritty stuff that they can ask you on time so that you know which methods to use to answer it. OK, so let's have a look at the first question. The first question says, it took Emma 1.45 hours to write an exam. How many minute, minutes did it take her? Okay, so essentially, when you're converting hours to minutes, you always multiply by 60. And if you're converting minutes to hours, you divide by 60. So this is a simple question where you go 1.45 multiplied by 60, and it gives you 87 minutes. So that's simple. It took her 87 minutes to write this exam. Now, let's look at question 1.2. Write this time now in hours and minutes. Okay, so one way you can look at it, you can see, okay, this is 87. So 60 of that makes it one hour. And then I'm left with 27 minutes. So you can go one hour and 27 minutes. Or you can actually do the calculation way where you would say, okay, the number in front of the comma represents an hour, represents the hours. So you have one is one hour and then you end up having 0 0.45 left so you then convert just the 0 0.45 two minutes and it will give you 27 minutes right so in total the answer is then one hour and 27 minutes so it's important for you to know how to go from um something in hours and then converting it to hours and minutes or something in minutes and converting it to hours and minutes okay um, another place that I've, you can have a look at distance, speed, and time. I also go a little bit into how to do these calculations if you don't feel confident at the end of this lesson. Okay, 1.3. Malcolm states that it took her 1 hour and 45 minutes. Convert this time to hours to show that it's not 1.45. So Emma wrote for 1.45 hours, right? But Malcolm is looking at this time and saying, wait a minute. It can't be 87, it can't be 1 hour and 27 minutes. If I look at that value, it's 1 hour and 45 minutes. Okay, so now they're showing you to prove that this is not the case. Okay, so they want you to convert 
the one hours and 45 minutes now to just hours. Okay, so essentially the one hour is already in hours. So what we need to do is we need to convert the 45 minutes into hours. So like I said earlier, in order to get from minutes to hours, you then have to divide by 60, which is 0 0.75, right? So that means that one hour and 45 minutes is actually 1.75 hours. And one hour and 27 minutes is 1.45 hours. So what I'm actually trying to drive home here, grade 12, is that it's important that you don't look at this and think, okay, this is now given in hours, so this means that what comes after the comma is 45 minutes. Essentially, this is 0 0.45 hours, and that has to be converted to two minutes. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, let, let's bring in the calculator, okay? Now, the reason why I want to teach you how to use the calculator is because it's very easy to make mistakes when you're doing calculations with time. Um, what I mean by that is, let's say they give you a question, you can work on your fingers and say, okay, if it's two o'clock and it takes me five hours and I count, okay, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five. But sometimes there's like these weird amounts of minutes or the weird amount of seconds that can really throw your calculations off and makes it a little bit harder to actually get the accurate, correct answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to use your calculator, your scientific calculator, to actually do time calculations. Okay, so I'm going to go through this slowly. Um, and also, if you don't quite get it the first time, go back. And when you are going through this, please have your calculator with you so that you can see what, I, what buttons I'm referring to, and you can actually do the calculations to make sure you're getting the right answers. Okay, so 1.4 says, Emma leaves the examination center at quarter past 10 and gets home at eight minutes past 11. How long did it take her to travel home? Now, if you think about this, the long way, or the way that most people will do it, is they will actually just count themselves, okay? They will say, okay, from... 10 to 15, and they'll go 5, 20 past, uh, half past, 25 to, and count the minutes in that way. There's no problem with doing that, and if you prefer to do it that way, that's fine. The only reason why I don't teach it that way is because it's very easy to just count wrong or make a mistake. So I feel like using the calculator is a lot more accurate. But if you've never used the calculator in this way, then it's going to take you a while to actually get this right. So you're going to have to make sure that you practice and that you actually have your calculator with you while we're going through this. Okay, so if she um, gets home at 10 pa 8 minutes past 11 and she leaves at 10, 15, how long did it take her? Now, the way we're going to do this is obviously you take... If you want to know the time between these two times, how what the actual time lapse is between these two times, you're going to take the later time and you're going to subtract the earlier time. That way you will find the difference between the two times, okay, and how long it took within that time period, okay? And the way you can do this um, is first making sure you take your calculator out and make sure I'm going to show you the time button. Okay, and you know which, what is the time button on your specific calculator. So, if you have a Casio calculator, your time button looks like this. So, it's got like a circle and then a colon and then a double colon. Okay, so if you have a Casio, that will be, if I say press the time button, I'm referring to that button. If you have a sharp calculator, right, then your um, time button is this DMS button, right? Now, in all of these cases here, the first sort of part refers to hours, then the middle one refers to minutes, and then the last one refers to seconds, okay? So when I say you have to press the time button, that's the button I'm referring to. Now, we want to do the calculation of saying 11.08 um, minus 10.15 because we want to calculate the difference. So from this time to this time, means I'm going to take this time and subtract that time, and it will give me the difference between the two. So how do we do this? You are going to say 11.08 minus 10.15 on your calculator. So I'm going to show you, and take your calculator out now, and we're going to do this slowly. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in 11, 
and then you're going to press the time button. Then you're going to type in eight and you're going to press the time button. So this means you telling the calculator that the 11 is hours and that the eight is minutes. And then you click naught and the button and that is telling the calculator that this is seconds. Now in this question, there's no seconds. So I don't have anything written in there. Fine. Then remember we're saying we're saying this minus that. So we're going to click minus and then you're going to do exactly the same. You're going to type 10, which represents the hours. You're going to type 15, which represents the minutes. And then you're going to type 0, which represents the seconds. Please remember to type, press the button after every single number. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And you click equal to on your calculator. And this is the answer that you should get. Now, if it's in the middle... The first one is hours, this one's minutes, and this one is seconds. So this middle part here represents the minutes. Okay, so you've just calculated that from quarter past 10 to 8 minutes past 11, it's 53 minutes. Okay, isn't that a nice and easy way to do time calculations? Okay, so the answer here then is then 11.08 minus 10.15 equals to 53 minutes. So that's how long it took her to travel to get home. Okay, let's try another example now where we use the calculator. Emma goes to bed at 16 minutes past 10 and wakes up at 23 minutes past 6. How long did she sleep for? Now, grade 12, so when you are doing a time calculation that's over midnight, okay, what you need to do is you need to calculate the time for the day before, and then calculate the time for after midnight and then add them together. Okay, so you're actually doing a calculation per day. Now, if you notice, she went to sleep at one day and then she woke up the next day. Okay, so we're first going to do the calculation of um, from 16 minutes past 10 to midnight. Okay, and midnight, when we're doing calculations with a calculator, instead of going, you know, when it's 12 o'clock, then you're... Uh, clock then your um, watch goes zero 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 now for this calculation we actually that is actually the 24th hour okay of the previous day so on the day we're working with now it's got 24 hours in total so you are going to start by saying you're going to first calculate this part and then you're going to calculate the next part but when you tap Typing in the 0, 0, 0, 0.00, you are going to type the 24 in here because this is the 24th hour of this first day. Okay, so you're going to go 24, then you're going to press the button, then you're going to click 0 and then 0. So this is now midnight and we're going to subtract this time that she actually went to bed, right? Which is 22, 16 and then 0. Right? And if you do this calculation on your calculator, you will get 1 hour and 44 minutes. So that means that she slept for 1 hour and 44 minutes um, before it went over to the next day. So this is the calculation for the first day. Okay. Now, I'm now going to start. And, and, and if I look at this now, this one is easy to calculate. Because if I look at this, you can see that from 12 o'clock to 23 minutes past 6, is actually 6 hours and 23 minutes, as it is there. So from 12 o'clock till 23 minutes past 6, there's no calculation really required. It's literally just the 6 hours that she slept and the 23 minutes. So in order to do the calculation in full now, I'm going to add this 1 hour. So let's say she slept, this was a Wednesday night, right? So she slept 1 hour and 44 minutes the Wednesday night, right, until 12 o'clock. And then Thursday, she slept 6 hours and 23 minutes, right? So to find out how long she slept in total, we are just going to add this 1 hour and 44 minutes plus the 6 hours and 23 minutes. So that's exactly what you're going to put in your calculator. The 1 hour, so it's 1 button, 44 minutes, 0 seconds, right? Then you're going to subtract, oh, sorry, add the 6 hours and 23 minutes and zero seconds and in total she had then slept eight hours and seven minutes so you see how you're reading this first one is hours minutes and seconds so the answer for this question then is eight hours and seven minutes so from 20 16 minutes past 10 
on Wednesday to 23 minutes past 6 on Thursday was a total of 8 hours and 7 minutes. Now, I know that this seems such a long way, you know, instead of just counting on your fingers, okay, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, but I feel like if you get this, and, and you know, it's really not a, really difficult to do, but if you get this, then you are guaranteed to get all the time calculations correct. You can always calculate time lapse. Okay, then let's do one more example. So it says here, it is holiday time and Emma travels from Cape Town to Johannesburg via bus to visit the auntie. She leaves at 16 minutes past 6 um, in the evening um, on the 8th of November and arrives at 25 past 11 a.m. on the night. How long did she travel for? Okay, so again, your brain is already telling you, first, let's do the calculation of the 8th of November, and then we're going to do the calculation of the 9th of November, and then we're going to add these totals together. Okay, so how do we do this calculation? So this is, this, we're going to calculate from quarter past 6 to 0, 0. Take note now, because I'm doing this in the calculator, if it's p.m., then we have to convert, change the times to, if it's 6 o'clock, then we need to change it to 18.16, okay, because that's the 18th hour of the day, and this is actually going to be 24 hours, because that's the 24th hour of the day, so this is the 8th of November, is the calculation, we need to find out what's the difference between these two, and what is the time lapse here, okay, so the way we do this, is we're going to calculate the uh, this minus that, right, so we're going to calculate the end of the day, which is the 24th hour, minus the 18th hour and 16 minutes, so we're going to go press our button, 24 button, 0 button, 0 button, and then we go minus 18 button, 16 button, 0 button. So the key here in this example, and this is why I added it, is making sure that you change the, um, the time here to p.m., uh, to the 18th hour because it's p.m., right? If this was a.m., you would have left the 6 and the 16 as is. All right, so that will then give us five hours and 44 minutes. So that means that on the 8th of November, she traveled for a total of five hours and 44 minutes. Now, how long did she travel the next day? If I, I just literally have to look at the time, 11.25. So that means it's 11 hours and 25 minutes. So in order to calculate the total time traveled, I'm going to take the five hours and 44 minutes, and I'm going to add the 11 hours and 25 minutes and in total, she traveled for 13 hours and 51 minutes. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys and that you are now able to use your calculator to do time. Um, I am working on a platform where you can get worksheets and download worksheets to practice these with the memos, um, so I will add that in the link once that uh, facility and once that sort of platform is ready, but um, yeah, I hope that this makes sense to you and now you know how to use a calculator to do time calculations. So great world, there's that video, hope you found it helpful and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, if you have any questions, comment section. And if you have any recommendations for future videos or any specific section that you're still struggling with, let me know in the comment section and I will try and see what I can do to help you. Um, just a reminder also of those of you who are interested, I offer live revision classes which you can sign up for by emailing mathsmonkey at gmail.com. Yeah, then I will see you in the next video, great 12s. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.